What's going on, Nerd Squad? And welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. It has arrived. We've done it. We're here, guys. Our next MCU treat is upon us. Falcon and the Winter Soldier Episode 1 has arrived. And we can finally start getting answers to some burning questions that we've had since we last saw our Avengers. Questions like, is Bucky's mind cured? Is Sam Wilson the new Captain America or no? Are the Avengers broke? I'm Taylor McWaters, and here is our breakdown reaction for episode one of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let's talk about it. Right off the bat, it doesn't take long for us to see where Sam Wilson is, emotionally, in this new world. He's doing up his dress shirt, he's looking down at the bed, he's looking down at the shield, Captain America's shield, and it almost makes us think that he was about to go to Steve Rogers' funeral, the way it's shot, and my heart wasn't ready. I was like, damn, this fast, we're gonna see the funeral that fast? Is he dead? I didn't even know he was dead, this is so sad, okay. But then we cut away and we catch up on what Sam is actually actually doing in this new crazy world. And he's not alone. Danny Ramirez plays a character named Lieutenant Torres, who may or may not be someone in the comics, but I'm not gonna talk about it yet, because I don't want to Mephisto it and be like, oh, this guy might come in, and oh, I saw a fly in the truck, which means it's gonna be Mephisto, Silver Surfer confirmed. No, 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 no. He did play at one point uh, the Falcon in the comics, but not saying it's gonna happen in the show, don't expect it, but that's just who he is and I have to mention it. And now he's acting as Sam's boots on the ground while Sam watches the skies up above. The episode starts off with a bang, a 10 minute bang, a really good bang. This amazing action sequence near the Libyan border and Sam's mission is to save a US soldier from a familiar foe. The face of that foe being George St. Pierre, who we last saw getting kicked in the head from Steve Rogers at the start of Captain America, The Winter Soldier. He plays a villain named Batroc the Leaper, the character character was first introduced into Marvel Comics back in Tales of Suspense issue 75. And just as he made Steve's mission a challenge in that movie, he makes Sam's mission a challenge here as well. So Sam Wilson takes care of him using his upgraded wings and then he meets back up with fellow Avenger James Rhodes. Rhodey appears at a ceremony at the Smithsonian and we see just what was on Sam Wilson's mind during the opening shot of this episode. We see Sam voluntarily giving up the shield, explaining how it doesn't belong to him still. Even Rhodey he goes for a walk down memory lane with Sam, expressing his opinion that the world really does need a hero, especially now. They need this new image to look up at, especially in this new world post blimp. It's madness. The world is madness. But Sam doesn't feel like it's the right move still in his heart. Then we get to catch up with Bucky Barnes, and we have so many questions. And his therapist also has so many questions. She asks Bucky about his nightmares and if they're still occurring. Bucky lies, says there's no more nightmares, but there are. And they're taking a on him. He also explains that he never really had any time to process anything in his life. It was so fast. He was asleep for most of it, if not all of it. He was this killing machine, frozen otherwise, and then all of a sudden Thanos is coming. He wakes up from his beauty sleep in Wakanda, where he actually references as this quiet, peaceful moment in his life. He wakes up, he has to fight aliens, he's the first one that ends up getting dusted after Thanos' snap, and then when he comes back moments later, which was actually five years later, he then has to fight yet again. Somebody get this guy to a spa, just relax, listen to some whale noises, chill out a bit. And the first episode also gives us more winter Soldier as well, specifically in a flashback to a Hydra assassination where the Winter Soldier takes out a young man who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and he saw the Winter Soldiers with his eyes. And then Bucky wakes up sweating. He's sleeping on the ground in his home current time. So it turns out his dark memories are still in his head, bouncing around, and Bucky is trying to live through it. He's trying to get through it. In fact, he's trying to make amends in a way. Because then we see Bucky walking the streets where he comes to the aid of an older gentleman. Now, this old man is a great wingman. I mean, he gets Bucky a date right off the bat, episode one. He's trying to get him out there. And then the two talk about the older man's son a bit. And that son ends up being the same bystander that Bucky took out previously as the Winter Soldier. So Bucky's got a book with names, and those are the names of past assassinations and he's trying to confront his past even though he tells his therapist that he's fine. This side of Bucky is amazing. It's heartbreaking, but it's amazing to see Bucky doing good or at least trying to fix some of the problems that he's been a part of. Sam Wilson also has places to be post Endgame madness. So he left the shield in the Smithsonian. So what's step two? What's the goal? Where does Sam Wilson need to be now that half the world has come back? Well, with his family, of course, of course. We meet up with Sam after his Falcon helicopter mission in Louisiana and we're introduced to Sam's sister, Sarah, played by Adepero Aduye. And we get a real life conversation between the two. See, Sarah didn't blip like Sam did. So for five years, five years, she struggled to get by emotionally and financially. She's in the process of trying to sell their family boat and Sam is not on board. 
pun intended. He wants to get alone and try and keep this family dream afloat. He's confident, you know, being an Avenger and all, that the loan will be possible to get. So when Sam and Sarah sit down to talk loans, the agent recognizes Sam as the Falcon. He recognizes him as an Avenger, the hero that he is, even getting a selfie with him. But it doesn't change the fact that banks and loans and all these people coming and going and blipping and coming back to life, things are complicated. Funds are a little bit scary. And apparently it takes time to get that post blip stimmy. We also get to see the world in chaos. We get our first look at this evil group called the Flag Smashers. And from the comics, in his first issue, the original Flag Smasher was just one guy, and he made his intentions pretty clear. He wanted to erase national boundaries and accept the essential unity of all of mankind, making the world a better place. Now, we got a first look at some Flag Smashers, and it seems like they have a similar agenda from the comics as they do in the show. They rob a bank in their first meetup, and I mean, judging by the financial situation, that an Avenger and his family are in, it doesn't seem all too insane to rob banks in this world. Not saying you should, but I'm just saying in this world, of course. I'd be upset too if I disappeared for five years and the government's like, yeah, by the way, you owe us like a fat phone bill. Your phone's been on for five years, so you have $600,000, thanks. And then we also see good guy Lieutenant Torres, and he was there undercover, and we got some footage for Sam to go over and try and get to the bottom of this Flag Smasher madness. But right before the episode ends, we get a pretty shocking announcement. We see the government announce a new symbol of hope, a new Captain America, and there he is wearing the same suit, not as good of an but still the same suit, Rocking the same shield, we meet US agent John Walker. Wyatt Russell is set to play this character and he first came into comics with Captain America issue 323. And he actually started off opposed to Captain America. He staged fights, he made himself look like a better leader, and he took on the alias Super Patriot, and then of course, Captain America. This guy isn't the nicest in the comics, so odds are things will not be smooth for Sam and Bucky in their personal or professional lives. Well guys, there you have it. What did you think of the first episode of six for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let us know your comments and thoughts down below. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Thank you for watching Top 10 Nerd. And tune in next week where we can talk shop about episode two. You guys rock. See ya.